All right, welcome back. We are going to discuss discount rates and how we use them in different scenarios. And so up until this point, when we've been working with interest rates, our interest has either been paid or charged at the end of a period. And we call this type of interest, interest payable in appears. And that might be confusing, but really all it means is that we are getting paid or we are charged interest at the end of a period rather than at the beginning. But what if we did have an interest rate where that interest is paid or charged at the beginning of a period period rather than at the end. That type of interest is called interest payable in advance, and that is what a discount rate is. It is interest earned or charged at the beginning of a period rather than the end. And so the way a discount rate works or interest payable in advance is let's, for example, say that I took out a loan of a hundred dollars and I took out that loan for a period of just one year. So time is going to equal one. And I have a discount rate or a rate of interest payable in advance of 10%. And that would be equal to point one in decimal form. And so what is different about this scenario? Well, it all has to deal with this rate of interest, right? Rather than having an interest rate, we have a discount rate where our interest is payable in advance or at the beginning of the period rather than at the end. And so this is how that works. If I take out this loan of $100, instead of getting that $100 right away, I'm actually going to be charged 10% right at the beginning. So instead of getting this $100, I'm actually gonna lose 10% of that right after I take it out. So I have $100 times 10%, and that's gonna be equal to $10. And so what that means is, although I took out a loan of $100, I had to pay 10 of it right away, and so then I'm only left with $90 for that loan that I took out. And then I still need to pay off that $100 that I took out by the end of the year. And so to kind of get an idea of how this is different from our typical interest rate, let's revisit or recall one of the ways we use to calculate the effective annual interest rate. Remember that we said that that rate, the effective annual interest rate, is equal to the accumulation at time one minus the accumulation at time zero divided by the accumulation at time zero. Now, when I gave this before, it might have been a more generic form where we had t and then t minus one instead of one and zero, but it is the same idea that if we have a time period of one year, we can figure out what the interest rate or the annual effective interest rate is for that one year period by using this formula if we know our amounts at the end of each of those years, right? And so if we did that in this scenario, we would have that this is equal to 100 minus 90 divided by 90, right? Because the value that we need to pay in the future is that $100, that is the amount in the future at the end of one year, and the amount that we started with after losing that initial 10% was 90. And so if we solved for this, this would be equal to 10 divided by 90, which if you plugged in your calculator would be an annual effective interest rate of 0.1 repeating or 11.11%. .11%. And now we can see how an effective annual interest rate is different from a discount rate. And so let's go back a little bit and we can compare these two types of interest even further. So just like we have this formula for the effective annual interest rate, we also have a formula like this for the effective discount rate. And so D is going to be equal to the accumulation at time one minus the accumulation at time zero divided by the accumulation at time one. So the difference here is that in our denominator, we have the accumulation at time one, or at the end of our period, rather than in the interest rate formula, where we have our starting amount at time zero, at the beginning of the period. And so what we see here is that effective annual interest measures growth based on the base of an initially invested amount, that would be this value right here, whereas the effective annual discount rate measures growth on the basis of the year-end accumulated amount. And that is this right here, our accumulation at the end of the time period. And so either one of these can be used in a scenario because what you'll find as we go through this lesson is we are actually able to easily convert from a discount rate to an interest rate for any particular scenario. And so let's work with this equation here and let's see what else that we can learn about discount rates. So here we have that discount rate formula where we have the accumulation at time one minus our initial investment divided by that accumulation at the end of that one year period. Well, what we can do is we can rearrange this formula. So if I multiply both sides by the accumulation at time one, what we'll have is A of one times D is equal to the accumulation at time one minus the accumulation at time zero. And so if we add this term to this side of the equation 
and then we subtract this term with our d to the other side, then we'll have this. We'll have the accumulation at time zero is equal to the accumulation at time one minus the accumulation at time one times d, right? So all we did was we added this term to both sides. So now we have a positive initial investment on this side of the equation. And then we subtracted our term with d to the other side of the equation. And so now what we can do is we can pull out the common factor of the accumulation at time one from each of these terms. And then what we'll have is that the accumulation at time zero or the initial investment is equal to the accumulation at one year in the future times one minus the discount rate. And so now what does this equation right here represent? This is actually a very important equation that tells us something significant about our discount rate. Particularly, this is very similar to our present value equation. Because if you remember our present value equation, right, we have that the amount right now or the present value or that initial investment is equal to that accumulated value in the future times our present value factor, which we represent with the letter V. And in this particular case, it would be to the power of one. But if we were looking at just any time T in the future, this would be represented with a T rather than a one. And so what we learn here is that the discount rate or at least one minus the discount rate acts as a present value factor. It is serving the same purpose as this present value factor. We have our present value right here. It's equal to some value in the future, and then we're multiplying by that factor. And so what we find is that one minus D is equal to V. And then this will also be true for any amount of time in the future. And so this also means that the quantity one minus D to the power of T is going to be equal to V to the t, right? So our present value factor for any amount of years is going to be equal to one minus the discount rate for that same amount of years. And so these are two more important formulas that you need to know regarding discount rates. But we're not done yet. There's actually more that we can learn from these formulas. And so remember what v is equal to. We can rewrite that formula to be one minus d is equal to v, but we know that v is actually equal to one over one plus the interest rate, our annual effective interest rate. Then we can rewrite this by subtracting this one from both sides, so I we'll have negative d is equal to one over one plus i minus one. And then if we divided both sides by negative one so that we just have a positive d, we would have that d is equal to one minus one over one plus i. Right, when we divide both sides by negative one, this is gonna become a positive one, and then this value right here will be negative, so I just switched their placements to keep it looking pretty nice. And so then if we continued and we said d equals, and then we rewrote this one to be one plus i divided by one plus i, and that's so that it will combine with this fraction here, which is already one over one plus i. Now we have a common denominator, so we can actually subtract the numerators, and we'll see that this negative one and this one are gonna cancel out. So now we find that D is equal to I divided by one plus I. And so this is another important formula regarding the discount rate that you're going to wanna know. We can find our discount rate if we know our interest rate. The discount rate's just gonna be equal to that interest rate divided by one plus the interest rate. And so now let's look at an example where we would actually use some of these formulas. So here we have, if D is equal to 0 0.03, find V and I. Now, this is where we need to recall those formulas from before. Remember, we said that one minus D is equal to V. So in this case, if we wanted to find V, all we would do is take one minus D, which in this case is 0 0.03, so V is gonna be equal to this, and that will be equal to one minus 0 0.03, which means that V is going to be equal to 0.97, right? So V is equal to 0.97. That is the first part of this question. And then we also wanna find our interest rate I, and we also just learned that D is equal to i divided by one plus i. And so we can use this to our advantage to solve for the interest rate. So if we plug d into that equation, we would have that 0 0.03 is equal to i divided by one plus i. And then if we multiplied both sides by the quantity one plus i, we will have one plus i times 0 0.03 is equal to i. And then if we distribute 0 0.03 to each part of this quantity, we will have 0 0.03 plus 0 0.03i is equal to i. And then we can subtract this i term 
from this i term. And so then this will give us that 0 0.03 is equal to 0.97i. And now we can divide both sides by 0.97 to isolate our interest rate and figure out what it is equal to. And so if we do that, we'll have that i is equal to 0 0.03 divided by 0.97, which is equal to 0 0.0309. And so that is going to be our interest rate. So given a discount rate of 0 0.03, we can find our present value factor v, and we can also find our interest rate i using these two nice formulas that we found earlier. So now just like normal interest rates, there's actually different types of discount rates, right? So we covered simple interest rates. Well, we can also have simple discount rates. And so it's very similar to how we did simple interest before. So up until this point, when we were looking at discount rates, we were looking at a compounded discount rate. Well, now we can look at what a simple discount rate would be, which is this factor right here, which would also be a present value factor. We just have one minus D times the value of time rather than this quantity raised to that power of time. So it's very similar to the interest rate formula we already know where we took our interest rate and multiplied it by time rather than taking the quantity 1 plus i to the power of time. And just like we have nominal annual interest rates, we can also have nominal annual discount rates. And of course, these would be compounded m times per year. And if you're not familiar with nominal interest rates, I do have a lesson on that that you can watch. In fact, it would be the previous lesson from this one. And in this case, this is the conversion formula to find your discount rate based on a nominal discount rate. And so other than this formula, nominal annual discount rates work just like nominal annual interest rates. So before we end this lesson, I want a quick look at a chart that is going to help you understand the difference between the formulas that use discount rates and the formulas that use the interest rates that we have been using up until this point. All right, so here is a chart that I think is going to be very helpful. One of the things that I wish that I knew sooner when doing problems regarding discount rates and just normal interest rates is how they differ in present value and future value scenarios. So when you have a problem where you're looking at the future value, these are the formulas you want to use for each type of rate given that they are compounded. So if we have a typical interest rate, we just have that accumulation at time t, or the accumulation in the future, is just equal to that initial deposit times our accumulation factor, right? One plus the interest rate to the power of t. That's nothing new. But if we want to do the future value with a discount rate, d, it's going to look like this. The accumulation at time t is going to be equal to the initial deposit times one divided by one minus d to the t. And this is because when we are rearranging that formula to discover different things about our discount rate, we actually started by noting that it is equivalent to the present value factor, right? So it's important to realize that in a future value scenario, you do not multiply by one minus d to the t power. It's going to be one divided by one minus d to the t power. It's in the present value scenario, right? This is our present value column. In this scenario, that's where we have this one minus d to the t power because this is equal to our present value factor that we normally had with our typical interest rate. So when we have our interest rate i, the present value is equal to that accumulated value in the future times our present value factor, right? This could also be written as p of t times v to the t. This present value factor is equal to one minus d to the power of t. So you need to keep that in mind. These are kind of flip-flopped if you want to think about it like that. For our future value with a normal interest rate, we just have that accumulation factor. But if we were using a discount rate, then you have one over that discount rate present value factor, right? So you have one over one minus d to the power of t. And then it is the opposite for present value. Now we have our accumulation factor under one, which is just the same as the present value factor. And then we have our normal form of one minus d to the power of t. So don't make the mistake of doing a future value problem and using the present value formula for a discount rate. That's what I'm hoping that this kind of helps you sort out the difference between when you're using an interest rate and a discount rate. And with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you have any questions, because this can get pretty confusing, please feel free to leave those questions in the comments below. But if you wanna see some example problems, feel free to check out the examples video that I will have linked at the end of this video, as well as in the description below. And so with that, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.